because I don't have a CPR dummy to practice on. Don't be such a chicken. Sheesh, it'll be over in a minute. Ugh. Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 500 posts on medical preparedness in any disaster. I'm also the co-author, along with the lovely nurse Amy, of the number one Amazon bestseller in survival skills and safety first aid, The Survival Medicine Handbook. This is America's favorite annoyance, T.D. Bird, and this guy isn't really a dummy, or a, well, a, a CPR dummy at least. Now, one of the items that I see turning up in prepper medical storage nowadays is the automated external defibrillator. AEDs are user-friendly devices that even untrained bystanders can use to save the life of someone whose heart has suddenly stopped, also known as a cardiac arrest. Now, the question is, are these useful for those concerned about a collapse? <clears throat> AEDs look like short, chunky laptop computers, similar to the machines that are used to treat cardiac arrest in emergency rooms. I mean, you can find them now in restaurants, stores, and just about all sorts of places. They're now considered, as a matter of fact, to be so useful that the government proclaimed the first week of June to be AED Awareness Week. Let's talk a little bit about AEDs and their use. An AED gives you step-by-step -step voice instructions and won't go to the next step until you have completed the previous step. Because its sequence is so clearly diagrammed, it seems to give a reassuring calm to rescuers who are inexperienced with emergencies. AEDs will not allow a shock to be given unless a person is truly in cardiac arrest, making it close to foolproof. You can't shock a person who doesn't need it even if you wanted to. As long as the device is turned on, it's very easy to use. Now, before you use an AED on someone who has fallen down or is possibly in cardiac arrest, make sure that you evaluate them first. If you see a person pass out or if you find them unconscious, confirm that that person cannot respond. Shout at or shake the person to make sure he or she isn't sleeping. That is, if they're an adult, don't shake an infant or a young child Pinch them perhaps instead or press lightly on their chest to see what they do. Now if the person in question is unresponsive, not breathing and without a pulse, it's time to do CPR and get out the AED if you've got one. Of course, in modern times, you'd call emergency services. Now if two rescuers are present, you could perform CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, while the other person calls 911 and grabs the AED. Sudden cardiac arrest causes death in minutes if you don't take charge, so make a decision without a lot of dilly-dally. The success of the AED drops 10% for every minute you delay. Now, if an AED isn't readily available, do a couple of minutes of CPR, chest compressions, at a rate of 100 beats per minute. When the AED arrives, take a quick look. You'll see that the device consists of one or two control buttons and two sticky pads called electrodes, which you see here. By the way, Nurse Amy is going to demonstrate an entire AED cycle at the end of my little talk, so don't worry. The AED is a machine that produces the electric shock. In cardiac arrest, the heart muscles are no longer working in unison, and the shock you give helps them get into synchronized motion. For safety's sake, check for any water nearby before you use it. Water conducts electricity, so make sure to transport your patient to a dry area if needed. Remove jewelry, piercings, and anything made of metal from the patient to avoid burns. By the way, even a brassiere may have metal underwire, so it's a good idea to remove it before using the AED. If the bra hook's in the back, you can cut it in the front center to pull it quickly away from the skin. Also, there are a number of implantable medical items, such as pacemakers, that could cause burns. These will likely be just below the skin on the left upper chest. These types of patients usually have some kind of medical alert bracelet that indicates that the device is in place. So how does the AED, Automatic External Defibrillator, procedure work? You expose the person's chest and you dry it if it's wet. 
Now, patients that have hairy chest may need to be quickly shaved in the two electrode locations to provide good connections. Many AEDs come with a razor exactly for this purpose. Now, if there are any medication patches like Nicorette patches, things like that, that you might find, take them off and wipe the skin clean. Your patient should be on as hard a surface as possible so that your CPR will be more effective. Now, Turn the AED on. The machine will then give you step-by-step -step voice prompts and full instructions. You may even see prompts on a screen depending on what type of model it happens to be. You'll be told to place the sticky pads, called electrodes, one placed halfway between the right nipple and the uh, right collarbone, and the other one placed on the left side about two inches below the left armpit area. For children, you'll place one pad in the center of the chest on, in the front and then one pad in the center of the back in the back. Now be careful to adjust the pads so that they are at least one inch away from implanted devices or piercings. This allows the electrical current to flow between the two pads without interference. The flow will go directly through the heart area. Check that the wires from the electrodes, of course, are connected to the AED in good, in good fashion. And if your placement of the AED pads is faulty, the machine probably will tell you to check electrodes or some kind of similar message. Now the moment of truth. Make sure no one is in contact with your patient, including you. Press the button that, my, that says analyze and the device will start looking for the person's heartbeat. This sometimes happens just when you turn the machine on. In a very short time, the AED will sense whether the heart is beating or not. If there is cardiac arrest, the AED will tell you to push a button and deliver a shock. Stand clear of the person and make sure others are away before you push the shock button. Saying clear should do it just like you see on TV medical shows. In modern times, start or resume CPR until emergency medical help arrives or until the person begins to move. Stay with the person until medical help arrives and report all the information you know about what has just happened. After two minutes of CPR, you can use the AED again to check the person's heart rhythm and give another shock if necessary. If a shock isn't needed, continue CPR until the patient is responsive. I say in modern times a lot, and in today's world, this is what you should do. But what about if you're off the grid long term due to some kind of disaster? Survival is a situation where using the AED becomes somewhat problematic. Not because of lack of electricity for the device, it's battery powered, but because you're not going to be able to get this victim to a modern medical facility afterwards. Someone who has a cardiac arrest isn't sent home from the emergency room in a couple of hours. They end up in a cardiac intensive care unit with all sorts of technology strapped to them. That tech isn't going to be around, so are you going to save that person with an AED even if it works? Maybe not. AEDs are still expensive. I recommend you spend your money first, therefore, on other survival medical supplies like bandages, masks, gloves, and other items before you get your AED. If the you-know-what doesn't hit the fan, however, and you have the dough, it's a great idea to have one, especially if someone is at risk for heart attack in your family. This is Joe Alton, MD, wishing you the best of health and good times are bad. And now, Nurse Amy's demonstration. No, oh, brother, what's with you, bird? Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut clothing if needed. When patient's chest is bare, Remove protective cover and take out, look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pads. Peel one pad from the yellow plastic liner. Look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pads. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Press firmly to patient's bare skin. When the first pad is in place, look 
carefully at the picture on the second pad. Peel the second pad from the yellow plastic liner. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Press firmly to patient's bare skin. No one should touch the patient. Analyzing. No one should touch the patient. Analyzing. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Press shock delivered. Be sure emergency medical services have been called. It is safe to touch the patient. Begin CPR. For help with CPR, press the flashing blue, place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. Keep time with the beat. Pinch nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. Breathe. Continue with compressions. Pinch nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. Breathe. Continue with compressions. Pinch nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. Breathe. Continue with compressions. Pinch nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. Breathe. Continue with compressions. Stop CPR. No one should touch the patient. Analyzing. No one should touch the patient. Shock not advised. It is safe to touch the patient. If needed, begin CPR. For help with CPR, press the flashing blue button. 